There's this one coffee shop in my neighborhood with prices that are way more affordable compared to other places nearby. And they pay their baristas way more than other coffee shops do. It's quite the neighborhood gem, right? Well, that's until you find out that that neighborhood gem is also here. Here. Here, 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 and in 65 other places in major cities. Even though they're only a three-year-old company. Turns out this place that looks like a mom and pop coffee shop is actually a venture-backed startup. And it's valued at over $200 million because they've cracked this code in the coffee shop business model that investors love. And now they're just scaling like crazy. If you look at how they operate, these guys have completely flipped the entire coffee shop model. So how do they do it? And does that make them a threat to major chains like Starbucks? But first, what is this place? The story of Blank Street starts in Brooklyn, New York, summer 2020. And what was first these mint green carts popping up all around the city soon became tiny Blank Street storefronts. Just walking down the street, you see it everywhere. That's Michelle Wiles. She's a brand marketer and she wrote a really interesting piece on Blank Street. When you see a product everywhere, you think they must be doing something good. And I wanted to understand how they grew. And boy, did they grow. So one more Blank Street coffee. I've already walked past three Blank Street coffees. It's giving yeah, Starbucks. Cool. Predictably, it's rapid growth raised some eyebrows and it became more and more known that Blank Street wasn't this cute little chain, but a venture back startup. And that led to a ton of negative discourse about Blank Street online. But if you knew about this place from just what you've read online, you would think everybody hates it. But what's interesting to me is if you talk to anyone in real life who's been to a Blank Street, they love this place. It's like their favorite coffee shop. Blank Street was started by two venture capital guys, Vinay Menda and Isam Freya. And as college students in New York City, they struggled to find a quality cup of coffee for a reasonable price. And so they had this idea to reimagine the coffee shop. I actually got to talk on the phone with one of the founders, Vinay Menda. I would say to run a Blank Street would be half as much as a traditional coffee shop from a fixed cost perspective. For a typical barista, making a customer's drink involves a lot of ings. Measuring, steaming, frothing, pretty much all these things that take a really long time. But at Blank Street, making a drink is as simple as pressing a button. This is the Eversys espresso machine. The one they use can make 700 espressos per hour, eight at a time, and it sells for 50K, which is about what a typical barista makes in a year. This high-tech machine streamlines the coffee making process so they can make drinks faster and easier. And as a result, Blank Street can operate a coffee shop with fewer employees. That means they could save a lot of money on labor, but it also means they can open up in smaller spaces with cheaper rent. Most Blank Streets are actually pretty small, on average half the size of a normal coffee shop. And by leveraging cost-saving measures, Blank Street can take those higher profit margins and pass those savings on to their customers. They're able to serve high quality coffee for 25% less than their competitors. For comparison, Starbucks made over 900K in revenue per store in 2022. The size of a typical Starbucks is 2,000 square feet, which comes to about $450 per square foot per year. Most Blank Streets are on average 550 square feet. Given this, they only need to sell 27.5% of Starbucks volume to achieve the same level of real estate efficiency. But by doing that, they're actually able to pay their people more. F&B historically is known to have a very high churn of, of employees. There's also a cost to retraining and hiring. Um, so if you pay more and you're able to reduce churn by having happy people, you're actually saving money in the long run. But on the other hand, what that means is that the baristas they hire are A, better paid and B, can spend more time greeting you, saying, hey Evan, how's it going? Getting to know you and providing that good experience. What would you say is Blank Street's mission right now? Blank Street's mission is to create daily rituals that enrich your life. Ritual is a term I heard a lot during this interview. When I first started reporting on the story, I had a theory of why Blank Street was so successful and the founders had the same theory too. Turns out we were both wrong. You really thought the value proposition of this really high quality product for a very affordable price was why people love us. But what we realized throughout talking to our customers and having watching the brand evolve was that it was bringing back the ritual that people loved. You can go to Blank Street every day and it's not just a treat, but it's actually something you can go and feel good about yourself and not like you just you know hurt your wallet instead. The highest ranked NPS score is always customer service. So I think that's kind of why people come back and why our retention is so great because people really feel the connection and that's only possible because of the automation we have in the background. This kind of thing reveals a really weird conundrum about technology. Typically, using technology to make something cheaper and faster results in a pretty isolating experience for customers. And the coffee world is not exempt from this. About a robot making your latte. I don't know, I think it's something that's unnecessary. You want to have an interaction with somebody. I want that human connection. 
that you're not going to get from a robot. And that's what the whole experience is about. You get your cup of coffee, you know the person in the neighborhood. It's kind of therapeutic. But maybe finding a cost-effective, time-saving thing should focus more on creating a fulfilling human experience rather than just the bottom line. And that's not just because it's like a heartwarming narrative. It seems like it's what people actually really want. People hear tech, they think about the craft of the barista that's being lost, but they forget about the flip side, which is that there's also this craft of hospitality that you gain. And you know, I think everyone is uh, feeling the effects of inflation. So if you can find a place that's convenient, lower priced, and the barista's super nice, that's a winning proposition. And it's obviously working. All New York City Blank Street locations have been profitable within a month of opening. Their everyday customers like them. They're opening new spots because they're profitable. And if they can just nail that story, but keep delivering a good product, I actually think that they're in a quite strong position. Coffee shops can leave a bad taste in people's mouths by offering bad coffee. But as we see with Blank Street, they can also leave a bad taste in people's mouths by masquerading as a mom and pop coffee shop, all while taking in millions of dollars in venture capital funding to invest in technology to offer a lower priced product that could one day maybe force your favorite coffee shop out of business. As consumers, we have the freedom to support whatever company best aligns with our values. And if you're a consumer that values convenience and affordability, then Blank Street might be your thing.